Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Wayne Wong, and I work for my Brown Technology. We'll go deal with some man flesh. So when we started the working group, we we wanted to look at what was the current NAND technology in the marketplace and also what kind of software offering available for, for the mobile enabler and OEM to integrate a NAND device to a target platform. So at the time we saw many different type of NAND devices ranging from different size of page, different type of interfaces and different features. So as a result, the enabler, the OEM, has to write different driver to hook up the NAND device to the platform. And sit on top of the low-level driver, usually it's like uh, a block translation layer software, because NAND is a, uh, is a, is a non-place update device. And the translation software allows you to use an NAND device as a, as a, as a, like as a hard drive. So allow you to rewrite logical settings in place. And then sit on top of that will be a file system. So we decide to standardize the interface called the L2 NAND software interface. So the purpose of the interface is to allow the upper layer software to talk to a standard interface and then can manage different type of NAND devices. So therefore the, the OEM and the enabler can create their own driver at this level and you don't have to change the upper layer. And the goal is also try to apply this across different OSs. Okay? So then you can reuse the upper layer software. Okay, so as time go on, the system become more intelligent. So many vendors they start to push the upper layer software into the controller. So therefore, you have system that with the file system, without the block translation in place. And there's another concept of using a big bit L2 NAND interface is to put it directly into the device. So those were our objective, is to define, define the software interface for the block translation layer or the NAND device for easy adaptation of the device. Okay. So when we started the effort, we contacted some OS company, asked them to join us to help on the development. But we, we did not get very positive response because at that time they already defined their own NAND-like interfaces. Okay? But the problem of that, their NAND-like interface was fairly primitive. So, so the, the, the enabler, the, the semiconductor vendor, were not able to, to show the capability of the enhanced features. Okay? So we define our interfaces with three layer. Okay. The first layer is what we call a mandatory interface. Okay. So that supports most of the common NAND devices. And then the second layer, we have the optional interface. So allow the, the vendor to either implement it or not to implement the interface. But the optional interface may become the popular interface, okay, which we'll describe later. And then you also have the vendor-specific interface. So let's suppose you have a, uh, a high-performance command you want, to, you want to show the differentiation between your product and your competitor product. Then you can put it in the vendor-specific section. Okay, so for the mandatory functions, we involve include initialization function, and uh, also the identification function. Okay, so basically allow you to start up and shut down the devices and also allow you to identify what devices that you're working with. 
And then you have the page level I.O. function, allow you to perform single or multiple pages I.O. synchronous and asynchronously. At the time when we were working on this, most of the devices were synchronous. Okay? So now we have a lot of asynchronous devices available. And then for block function, allow you to identify that block and also erase the block. And then the shutdown function, release all the resources. And then for optional function, to speed up performance, instead of doing single page operation, in many vendor development and devices with multiple plane. Okay, so instead of working with one plane at a time, you can do dual plane operation. So in essence, you speed up the performance twofold. Okay. And then also allow you to do what we call internal page copy. So that's important when you do the garbage collection process and other functions. And then for vendor specific, we have like enhanced CCC function. So if you want to increase the reliability of the system, you can use more powerful ECC, then you can increase the endurance of the device. Okay, so the group started in 2006, and then we issued our white paper in uh, May of 2006, and then we did an invitation for different OSs to come in to participate. We well, finally, I think we talked to Symbian, but then when Nokia purchased Symbian, then they have to leave the organization. Okay. And then now we have a level one and level, spec, level two specification available and ready to be submitted to the board for review. Okay, so I chaired a working group. We don't have a vice chair. Rob Johnson was the one that will help out for the ed editing of the specification. And then the contributors include Intel, Sanders, Samsung. 